Homestuck. A young man stands in his bedroom. It just so happens that today, the 13th of April, 2009, is this young man's birthday. Though it was 13 years ago he was given life, it is only today he will be given a name. What will the name of this young man be? Enter name. Zoo smell poop, Lord. <coughs> Try again. John Egbert. Examine room. Your name is John. As was previously mentioned, it is your birthday. A number of cakes are scattered about your room. You have a variety of interests. You have a passion for really terrible movies. You like to program computers, but you are not very good at it. You have a fondness for paranormal lore and are an inspiring amateur magician. You also like to play games sometimes. What will you do? You quickly receive arms from drawer. Your arms are in your magic chest, poop lord! You remove cake from magic chest. Out of sympathy for John's perceived lack of arms, you pick up the cake for him and put it on his bed. You quickly receive arms from magic chest. You retrieve your fake arms from the chest. You use these for hilarious antics. You catalog them in your Silidex. You have no idea what that actually means, though. There are other items in the chest. You decide to examine the contents of the chest. In here, you keep an array of humorous and mystical artifacts, each one a devastating weapon in the hands of a skilled magician or cunning prankster. You are neither of those things. Among the artifacts are two pairs of fake arms, currently catalogued in your Silidex, one pair of trick handcuffs, one stunt sword, one magician's hat, one pair of beagle puss glasses, several smoke pellets, several blood capsules, and one copy of Colonel Sasker's daunting text of magical frivolity and practical japery, and one copy of Harry Anderson's Wise Guy by Mike Cavaney. Some of this stuff may come in handy at some point. For now, you decide to just take the smoke pellets. You catalog the smoke pellets. You stow the smoke pellets on one of your catalog cards in your Silidex. You still aren't totally sure what that means, but you're starting to get the hang of the vernacular, at least. You have two empty catalog cards remaining. You equip fake arms. You aren't totally sure if equip is a verb copacetic with the abstract behavioral medium in which you dwell, but you give it a try anyway. Unfortunately, you cannot access the fake arms. Their card is underneath the one you just used to catalog the smoke pellets. You will have to use the pellets first in order to access the arms, but this is probably unadvisable since you just make your room lousy with smoke. Your Silidex's fetch modus is currently dictated by the logic of a stacked data structure. You were never all that great with data structures and you find the concept puzzling and mildly irritating. But with any hope, perhaps you will advance new, more practical fetch modi for your Silidex with a little more experience. You examine Problem Sleuth poster. Is it even possible to get any more hard-boiled than that? You really doubt it. This poster was one of your wisest purchases. There was a nice spot on the wall next to it. You've been meaning to hang another poster there soon. You read the note on the drawer. Happy birthday, son. I am so proud of you. This note is rich with the aromas of fatherly aftershaves and colognes. Beside the note is a rolled up poster. You take the poster. Another birthday artifact. You wonder what is printed on the poster. You'll need some way to hang it on your wall. You acquire a hammer and nails. They will come in handy. You first place the hammer into your Silidex, but now all of your Capsulog cards are full. You wonder what will happen if you try to take the nails. You guess it doesn't hurt to try. You take the nails. You Capsulog four nails into the top card and push all the artifacts down a card. The fake arms are pushed entirely out of the deck. Oh well, they're probably completely useless anyway. But you probably don't want to do that again unless you want to drop the smoke pellets and suffer the consequences. In any case, you do now feel like you have gathered enough things to get down to business, and do some really important stuff. The next thing you do will probably be exceptionally meaningful. You decide to squawk like an imbecile and shit on your desk. This is the dumbest idea you've had in weeks! Stupid, stupid, stupid! And yet, the polished surface of your desk, it beckons.
You combine the nails and hammer. You merge the top two cards. The hammer and nails are now cataloged on the same card and can be used together. You use the hammer and nails on the poster. You use the hammer and nails card in conjunction with the card beneath it. You decide to nail the poster to the wall. You use the hammer, nails, and poster on the blank space on the wall. It's glorious. Exactly what you wanted. The old man really came through this time. You examine the Con Air poster. Put the body back in the box. I knew you was a punk. And I was right. You were playing us all along. You a free man. I said, put the bunny back in the box. Examine the Deep Impact poster. Morgan Freeman's genteel homespun mannerisms were perfect qualities for a president residing over a crisis. Oceans rise, cities fall, hope survives. Wow. Films about impending apocalypse fascinate you. Plus, a black president? Now you've seen everything. You examine the calendar. You've marked your birthday, the 13th of April. Another day you marked was supposed to be the arrival date for the highly touted Suburb Beta launch. It's been three days already. It's starting to become a sore subject with you. You decide to eat some cake. You are sick to death of cake. You've been eating it all day, and you have no intention of clogging your Silidex with it either. The cake stays put for now. You hear a notice coming from your computer. Someone is messaging you. You examine the incoming message. You pull up your computer. This is where you spend most of your time. You've decorated your desktop with some rather handsome wallpaper, which you made yourself. You are really proud of it. Your desktop is also littered with various programming project files. You are so bad at programming, sometimes you wonder why you even bother with it. Your pester chum application is flashing. Someone is trying to get in touch with you. You open pester chum. Only one of your chums is logged in. He sent you a message. You open the message. Hey, so what sort of insane loot did you rake in today? I got a little monsters poster. It's so awesome. I'm gonna watch it again today. The apple juice scene was so funny. Oh hell, that is such a coincidence. I just found an unopened container of apple juice in my closet. It is like fucking Christmas up in here. Okay, that's fine. But I just have one question and then a word of caution. Have you ever seen a movie called Little Monsters starring Howie Mandel and Fred Savage? But the seal on the bottle is unbroken. Are you suggesting someone put piss in my apple juice at the factory? All I'm saying is, don't you think monster Howie Mandel has the power to do something as simple as reseal a bottle? Try using your brain, numbnuts. Why did the fat kid or whoever drank it know what piss tasted like? I mean, his reaction was nigh instantaneous. It was the 15th day in a row Howie Mandel peed in his juice. Okay, I can accept that. Monster B-list celebrity douchebags are cunning and persistent pranksters. Also, Fred Savage has a really punchable face. But who cares about this? Let's stop talking about it. Did you get the beta yet? No, did you? Man, I got two copies already. But I don't care. I'm not going to play it or anything. The game sounds boring. Did you see how it got slammed in GameBro? GameBro is a joke, and we both know it. Yeah. Why don't you go check your mail? Maybe it's there now. Alright. You look out your window. You see the view of your yard from your window. Hanging from the tree is your tire swing. In a kid's yard, a tree without a tire swing is like a proper gentleman without a monocle. That is to say, he can hardly be considered a terribly proper gentleman at all. And there, beside your driveway, is the mailbox. You examine your mailbox. The little red arm swingy dealy thing or whatever it's called is flipped up. What the hell is that thing called anyway? You do not have time for these semantics. The red flippy lever thing means you have new mail, and that means the beta might be here. 
You go outside to check the mailbox. You are about to hurry down the stairs when you hear a car pull up into the driveway. It looks like your dad has returned from the grocery store. Oh great, he's beating you to the mail. You decide to forget it. You'll check the mail later. If you go downstairs to get it, he will likely monopolize hours of your time. You decide to chill out up here for a while until the dust settles. Sometimes you feel like you are trapped in this room. Stuck, if you will, in a sense which possibly borders on the titular. And now your chum is pestering you again. The clockwork of friendship turns ceaselessly, operating the swing lever dealies of harassment in perpetuity. Whatever, the dude can just hold his damn horses. Hi, I'm Tez slash Tex, and I'm the project's owner. Well, okay, I do more than that. I audio edit, do the artwork, and also voice Terezi for when that comes up. I just want to say thank you so much for watching our first video, and please subscribe so you can be notified for when the next episode is out. Aside from our main project of Homestuck, we will also be posting small side projects either between each episode or between every other episode, which will be dubs of Homestuck fan comics from Tumblr. So I mean, even if you don't want to subscribe for the main dub, I definitely think you should subscribe for them. Be sure to check out our main blog, with links in the description, for more updates on the dub. At the moment, we are still casting for a few trolls and exiles and guardians, so if you want to be part of this project, you still have time until we're all cast. However, more auditions will be available in the future, for example, the Alpha Kids, the Alpha Trolls, and all of them. So once again, thank you for watching, and don't forget to subscribe!